In our final video on weeds, we wanted South Dakotan farmers to talk about their experience with weeds in their no-till systems. And our question to the farmer was, has weed pressure increased or decreased with no-till? Well, <clears throat> what do we do if somebody has a garden at their yard? They mulch it to keep the weeds down. So if you do the same thing in your field, you're using all the last year's residue, leaving it on the ground, keeping the ground covered, you do keep a good share of your weeds from coming up. And over time, my weed problem has actually diminished. And I think you can see that by the crop here. And the reason for that is because I'm not burying the weed seed that might be present. In a low disturbance type system, you're not stirring those wheat seeds up. They're laying on top of the ground. Right. As a whole, the wheat pressure has gone down in the no-till system. Okay, are we saying that if you stop tilling, all your weed problems will go away? Of course not. And we really like Al Miron's take on this. The weed species change some. We no longer see the weeds that uh, have to have their seeds buried deep uh, coming up and you need to manage that. No-till is not synonymous with no management. When it comes to dollars, Matt Bainbridge walks us through his numbers. And honestly, you know, as we talked before, <clears throat> where somebody's going to do tillage to take out all their weeds to start clean, yeah. I'm going to use two to four, maybe up to six dollars worth of chemical to do that. So you're comparing that chemical cost versus a full tillage pass or two tillage passes, really. And they're still going to need to use a pre and they're still going to need to come back post the same as I am. So. so based on these last five videos, we have a question. Lower disturbance systems, especially when combined with diverse rotations, actually reduce weed opportunity, resulting in lower herbicide inputs. Merit or myth? Hmm. We'll let you guys decide that one. See you soon.